On today's show, we're gonna be talking all about the Final Cut Pro 10 that was just released a week ago. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you loathe it? I don't know. We'll find out, but stay right there. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and today is all about Final Cut Pro 10. So on the photo video show, we like to do some stuff on uh, you know the photographic side, but we also like to do things that involve video side as well. I'm a big fan of video. I watch them all the time. And you're technically watching one right now. So what we decided to do was go ahead and give our own assessment on what the hell is everyone so ticked off about? as far as Final Cut Pro 10 is concerned. I hear some people going, Ugh, I like it, but uh, there's a few pro features, you know, that, you know, they, they cut out, they nixed it. But anyone that's actually put their hands on this program, you know, there's really not much that a single editor cannot do with this program. There's really not. Now, if you're a big production house, I can probably see where some of you guys may be peeved, maybe pissed off or upset. But as far as like all the Lonely Islands out there, uh, no reference to the band, by the way. But for all those Lonely Island film uh, makers, uh, videographers uh, that do weddings and birthdays and parties and crap like that, or for even the independent journalist, Final Cut Pro 10 is a very, very powerful program. It has a lot of features that were obviously not in uh, iMovie 11. And some people have, in fact, referred to this as iMovie Pro and not Final Cut Pro. So what we should do, I think, is probably kind of go down the list of things that really perturb the pros, whatever that means. And let's go over some of the, the good things that us smaller guys are gonna really benefit from, all for the magnificent price point of only 300 bones. So let's get started. So a lot of the things that were now included in Final Cut Pro 10 that were not in Final Cut Pro 7 really do have a lot of advantages. I can speak from personal experience that whenever I would try to edit inside of Final Cut Pro 7, there were a lot of times where I would just completely and totally um, just, I would be flabbergasted at how long it would take to render a five minute clip. And I would literally, I would have to wait until that entire clip was fully rendered out just so I could take a peek at it. So as far as the rendering goes, I'm sold. I am so sold, it's not even funny. For those of you that enjoy the arduous, tedious render break, I, in it, have at it. It's all yours. But I, for one, I like to apply an effect and then just be able to flip and look at it. So, yeah, I can't piss and moan on this one. Sorry, pros. Now let's talk about the color board. I know that a lot of people are not digging the color board. Um, it does step far and away from traditional color wheel, three-way correction type of uh, color grading. I'll give you that. And in my personal opinion, the color board is not as powerful as I think that it could be. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any merit because if you take good footage with a great camera to begin with, hopefully, you're not gonna have to do much color grading in post anyway, or not as much. So I would say from the standpoint of, eh, once again, some more Lonely Islands or the more prosumer crowd, the color board is a powerful enough tool that you can do primary color corrections and maybe a secondary or a third uh, correction without ever having to leave Final Cut Pro 10. This, in my particular case, is going to be fantastic, but I do see where there are going to be segments of the higher upper echelon video editing crowd that's going to be a little pissed off. They need more. Of course, 
we all need more, don't we? Let's give ourselves a chance also to take a look at this magnetic timeline. The magnetic timeline is a interesting new technique. Uh, I have noticed over the last week of playing with it that you know, people are saying that they would like more tracks. They, they want tracks. They need tracks. Uh, tracks. I like the magnetic timeline, like a lot. And the biggest thing for me in the magnetic timeline is that it fills in my gaps. Keep the jokes to yourself. But not only does it fill in the gaps when you remove pieces uh, from the center of your timeline, but when I want to be done with a particular segment or scene, I can round up all the sound effects, all the different uh, soundtracks, and all the different video clips and compound them into a compound clip and just get all of that mess out of my way. I can literally change what would take eight to 10 different separate audio and video tracks and condense it down all into one. But if I wanna dig down into that segment, I can with a double click. And I have all the different tracks lined up there, but it's a very easy and efficient and very clean way to allow all of the clutter from happening on my main timeline. But if I just wanna deal with one segment of whatever video project that I'm working with, the magnetic timeline and the compound clips are magnificent. They work well and they reduce clutter and they just seem like a more logical way to do things. Rather than keep every last little segment, every last little cutaway, every last little sound effect all on your main timeline, get it done, compound it down, and then have a nice, clean, storyboard to work with. And then if you need to make micro adjustments, double click on your compound clip and then go in there and work. I think it's fantastically easy to do all of this because you can even put a compound clip inside a compound clip. So if you need tracks, have tracks. That is, in my opinion, one of the biggest selling points of this software is being able to nest compound clips inside of other compound clips. So there you have it, folks. That was my take on the Final Cut Pro 10 debacle. Now, I am with a lot of other professionals out there. I would love to have multicam editing. I would love to have XML exports if I wanted to, for whatever reason, use my setup in another video editing program. But the fact is, is that once you remove your mentality from the old and bring it to the new, this is a digital age. And I know that there are a lot of people that want to use tape and they have a lot of clients that are still using tape. But if someone didn't make the move to push the industry in this new direction, and all of these editors and media content uh, managers, if they didn't get that necessary push to move them into a new direction, who was gonna do it? There's only one company that I know of that has broken the rules time and time again and has been completely and totally successful at it. So I would say don't lose so much control. Hold your horses, Kimasabi. And let's just give Apple a chance. Let's see what they come up with. Let's see how this plays out. I'm interested. And I tell you, since it released, I have been on Twitter following the pound FCPX hashtag ridiculously, religiously. And I will say this, Final Cut Pro is a powerful, simple, elegant, beautiful piece of software that's going to work wonderfully well for 70 to 80% of the editing population. Now, for those guys out in Hollywood, I can see where you might be a bit peeved. You spent tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars on your editing setups. But there's nothing wrong with Final Cut Pro 7. The suite is still available to you. And I would say for you guys, Apple just needs to bring it back so that they don't plan on supporting it anymore. At least you guys can still buy it, have it, buy new licenses for it. 
so that you guys can get your jobs done. Other than that, Final Cut Pro gets a big thumbs up for me. And no, Apple didn't pay me to say that. So thanks for joining the program, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. We'll see you guys again next time. Later.